Hey boys and girls, uh, this is Miss Burns. I teach third grade ELA at Sally Humble Elementary. And today I am going to be doing a lesson with you on this text called Amos and Boris, one of my favorites. And I do have a note here. Um, if you have some paper and pencil handy, you want to go ahead and grab that because there'll be a couple of opportunities for you to stop and write some things down while we're going through this lesson together. Okay, so today we are going to read and review this story, Amos and Boris. We are going to discuss and vary some of our vocabulary words, and we will also discuss how the illustrations contribute to the text's meaning. So first thing we'll do, um, you'll just follow along with me while I read this story to you. And while you're listening and following along, have that paper and pencil ready uh, if you have it. And I want you to be paying attention. This text is full of um, beautiful, rich vocabulary words. And I also want you paying attention to the illustrations as well. All right, so this is Amos and Boris. Amos, a mouse, lived by the ocean. He loved the ocean. He loved the smell of sea air. He loved to hear the surf sounds, the bursting breakers, the backwards backwashes with rolling pebbles. He thought a lot about the ocean and he wondered about the faraway places on the other side of the water. One day, he started building a boat on the beach. He worked on it in the daytime, while at night he studied navigation. When the boat was finished, he loaded it with cheese, biscuits, acorns, honey, wheat germ, two barrels of fresh water, a compass, a sextant, a telescope, a saw, a hammer and nails, and some wood in case repairs should be necessary, a needle and thread for the mending of torn sails, and various other necessities such as bandages and iodine, a yo-yo, and playing cards. On the 6th of September, with a very calm sea, he waited till the high tide had almost reached his boat. Then, using his most savage strength, he just managed to push the boat into the water, climb on board, and set sail. The rodent, for that was the boat's name, proved to be very well made and very well suited to the sea. And Amos, after one miserable day of seasickness, proved to be a natural sailor, very well suited to the ship. He was enjoying his trip immensely. It was beautiful weather. Day and night, he moved up and down, up and down on waves as big as mountains. And he was full of wonder, full of enterprise, and full of love for life. All right, and don't forget to be listening for those big vocabulary words. You can jot those down on your paper. One night in a phosphorescent sea, he marveled at the sight of some whales spouting luminous water and later lying on the deck of his boat, gazing at the immense starry sky, the tiny mouse Amos, a little speck of a living thing in the vast living universe, felt thoroughly akin to it all. Overwhelmed by the beauty and mystery of everything, he rolled over and over and right off the deck of his boat and into the sea. Help, he squeaked as he grabbed desperately at the rodent, but it evaded his grasp and went bowling along under full sail and he never saw it again. And there he was, where? In the middle of the immense ocean, a thousand miles from the nearest shore, with no one else in sight as far as the eye could see, and not even so much as a stick of driftwood to hold on to. Should I try to swim home? Amos wondered. Or should I just try to stay afloat? He might swim a mile, but never a thousand. He decided to just keep afloat, treading water, and hoping that something, who knows what, would turn up to save him. But what if a shark or some big fish, a horse mackerel turned up? What was he supposed to do to protect himself? He didn't know. <clears throat> Morning came as it always does. He was getting terribly tired. He was a very small, very cold, very wet and worried mouse. There was still nothing in sight but the empty sea. Then, as if things weren't bad enough, it began to rain. At least the rain stopped and the noonday sun gave him a bit of cheer and warmth in the vast loneliness, but his strength was giving out. He began to wonder what it would be like to drown. Would it take very long? Would it feel just awful? Would his soul go to heaven? 
Would there be other mice there? As he was asking himself these dreadful questions, a huge head burst through the surface of the water and loomed up over him. It was a whale. What sort of fish are you? The whale asked. You must be one of a kind. I'm not a fish, said Amos. I'm a mouse, which is a mammal, the highest form of life. I live on land. Holy clam and cuttlefish, said the whale. I'm a mammal myself, though I live in the sea. Call me Boris, he added. Amos introduced himself and told Boris how he came to be there in the middle of the ocean. The whale said he would be happy to take Amos to the Ivory Coast of Africa, where he happened to be headed anyway, to attend a meeting of whales from all the seven seas. But Amos said he'd had enough adventure to last him a while. He wanted only to get back home and hoped the whale wouldn't mind going out of his way to take him there. Not only would I not mind, said Boris, I would consider it a privilege. What other whale in all the world ever had the chance to get to know such a strange creature as yourself? Please climb aboard. And Amos got on Boris's back. Are you sure you're a mammal? Amos asked. You smell more like a fish. Then Boris the whale went swimming along with Amos the mouse on his back. What a relief to be so safe, so secure again. Amos lay down in the sun and being worn to a frazzle, he was soon asleep. Then all of a sudden he was in the water again, wide awake, spluttering and splashing about. Boris had forgotten for a moment that he had a passenger on his back and had sounded. When he realized his mistake, he surfaced so quickly that Amos was sent somersaulting tail over whiskers high into the air. Hitting the water hurt. Crazy with rage, Amos screamed and punched at Boris until he remembered he owed his life to the whale and quietly climbed on his back. <clears throat> From then on, whenever Boris wanted to sound, he warned Amos in advance and he warned Amos in advance and got his okay, and whenever he sounded, Amos took a swim. Swimming along, sometimes at great speed, sometimes slowly and leisurely, sometimes resting and exchanging ideas, sometimes stopping to sleep, it took them a week to reach Amos's home shore. During that time, they developed a deep admiration for one another. Boris admired the delicacy, the quivering daintiness, the light touch, the small voice, the gem-like radiance of the mouse. Amos admired the bulk, the grandeur, the power, the purpose, the rich voice, and the abounding friendliness of the whale. They became the closest possible friends. They told each other about their lives, their ambitions. They shared their deepest secrets with each other. The whale was very curious about life on land and was sorry that he could never experience it. Amos was fascinated by the whale's accounts of what went on deep under the sea. Amos sometimes enjoyed running up and down on the whale's back for exercise. When he was hungry, he ate plankton. The only thing he missed was fresh, unsalty water. <clears throat> the time came to say goodbye. They were at the shore. I wish we could be friends forever, said Boris. We will be friends forever, but we can't be together. You must live on land and I must live at sea. I'll never forget you though, and you can be sure I'll never forget you, said Amos. I will always be grateful to you for saving my life, and I want you to remember that if you ever need my help, I'd be more than glad to give it. How he could ever possibly help Boris, Amos didn't know, but he knew how willing he was. The whale couldn't take Amos all the way into land. They said their last goodbye and Amos dived off Boris's back and swam to the sand. From the top of a cliff, he watched Boris spout twice and disappear. Boris laughed to himself. How could that little mouse ever help me? Little as he is, he's all heart. I love him and I'll miss him terribly. Boris went to the conference off the Ivory Coast of Africa and then went back to a life of whaling about while Amos returned to his life of mousing around, and they were both happy. <clears throat> okay, many years after the in incidents just described, when Amos was no longer a very young mouse, and when Boris was no longer a very young whale, there occurred one of the worst storms of the century, Hurricane Yetta. 
and it just so happened that Boris the Whale was flung ashore by a tidal wave and stranded on the very shore where Amos happened to make his home. It also just so happened that when the storm had cleared up and Boris was lying high and dry on the sand, losing his moisture in the hot sun and needing desperately to be back in the water, Amos came down to the beach to see how much damage Hurricane Yetta had done. Of course, Boris and Amos recognized each other at once. I don't have to tell you how these old friends felt at meeting again in this desperate situation. Amos rushed toward Boris. Boris could only look at Amos. Amos, help me, said the mountain of a whale to the moat of a mouse. I think I'll die if I don't get back in the water soon. Amos gazed at Boris in an agony of pity. He realized he had to do something very fast and had to think very fast about what it was he had to do. Suddenly, he was gone. I'm afraid he won't be able to help me, said Boris to himself. Much as he wants to do something, what can such a little fellow do? Just as Amos had once felt all alone in the middle of the ocean, Boris felt now lying alone on the shore. He was sure he would die, and just as he was preparing to die, Amos came racing back with two of the biggest elephants he could find. Without wasting time, these two good-hearted elephants got to pushing with all their might at Boris's huge body until he began turning over, breaded with sand, and rolling down toward the sea. Amos, standing on the head of one of the elephants, yelled instructions, but no one heard him. In a few minutes, Boris was already in water, with waves washing at him, and he was feeling the wonderful wetness. You have to be out of the sea to really know how good it is to be in it, he thought. That is, if you're a whale. Soon he was able to wiggle and wriggle into deeper water. He looked back at Amos on the elephant's head. Tears were rolling down the great whale's cheeks. The tiny mouse had tears in his eyes too. Goodbye, dear friend, squeaked Amos. Goodbye, dear friend, rumbled Boris, and he disappeared in the waves. They knew they might never meet again. They knew they would never forget each other. All right. I hope you love that story as much as I do. So now we are going to do a couple of vocabulary activities to go along with our book. So I do have an excerpt from the text over here. Um, and I'm going to read this to you, and I'll, while I'm reading it, I want you to be thinking about this word admiration. So pay attention to the words we have in bold print over here, and be thinking in your mind what you think this word means as it's used in the text. During that time, they developed a deep admiration of one another. Boris admired the delicacy, the quivering daintiness, the light touch, the small voice, the gem-like radiance of the mouse. Amos admired the bulk the grandeur, the power, the purpose, the rich voice, and the abounding friendliness of the whale. Okay, so take just a second. Look at these words in bold print. Let's read them together. Ready? Read them with me. We have admiration, we have admired, and we have admired again. So just two different words that we have here in bold print. Take a second to think about what do you notice that those two words, admiration and admired, what do they have in common? I'll give you a second to think about it. Think about their word parts. I know we've done this in class before. Okay, and if you notice that they share the same root word, admire, you are exactly right. So admiration and admire, they have the same root word of admire. So again, let's go back to our question. What does the word admiration mean in this quote? They developed a deep admiration of one another. Okay, let's see what you came up with. Let's see if it matches what I have. So admiration, if you said that admiration was respect or like for someone, or if you said something similar to that, you are absolutely correct. So admiration here is meaning having respect or like for someone. And I think we could all agree that Boris and Amos seem to have a lot of respect and they do seem to really like each other. We could probably even say that these two guys, these two friends love each other. All right, good job with that one. 
Okay, now we have one more little vocabulary activity, and this one um, is one of our techniques that comes from our friends at the Writing Revolution. So we're gonna do some varying vocabulary. So if you notice my page over here, my directions say brainstorm a list of adjectives for the given word below. Notice we have a tombstone here. Rest in peace, RIP, for the word large. Everybody say large. Okay, good job. Uh, now read this sentence with me, are you ready? Boris is a large whale. Well, okay, boys and girls, so we're saying rest in peace to this word large because you all are big third graders, almost fourth graders, and we don't wanna use a baby word like large. We want to use a more exciting, more beautiful word, okay? So let's see what we can come up with. If you have that paper and pencil, I want you to go ahead and take that out now, and I want you to jot down some words that we could use in this sentence in the place of large. So Boris is a large whale. Just quickly jot down a few words, a few adjectives that we could use to replace the word large in our sentence. Boris is a large whale. Okay, I'm gonna show you some words that I've come up with and you can see if it matches anything that you have. Okay, so one word I have is grand. So we could say Boris is a grand whale. That really makes your writing sound fancy. What about huge? Did anybody write down huge? We could say Boris is a huge whale. That's another word for large. We could use that in place of large here to describe Boris. Okay, what about bulky? This was one I know they mentioned uh, bulk in the book. So we could say bulky. Boris is a bulky whale having to do with his large size. Okay, what about powerful? Did anybody write down powerful? We could say Boris is a powerful whale. That would really spice up your writing. And last one, what about abundant? That one's really fancy, y'all say abundant. Boris is an abundant whale, okay? We could, if we put abundant in there, we would change the adjective A to an, right? An abundant whale. So that would be another one. Okay, and you may have come up with some different ones than what I have up here. There's no right or wrong answer, just as long as it would be an adjective that we would use to describe Boris the whale, something to do with his large size. Good job, y'all. Okay, now last thing we're gonna do, we are going to talk about some of the illustrations in this text. Okay, so let's look at this one quickly. How does the illustration on this page help to express the meaning of the text? So I hope you all notice that this book, let me grab my book, Amos and Boris, it shared a common theme with what we've been doing in class with Because of Winn-Dixie and Owen and Mazie. And what was that theme? Friendship, that's right, so unlikely friendships. So how does this illustration on this page help us understand the meaning of the text, this unlikely and unusual friendships? So I'll give you a second to think about that. And if you say something like, um, what do we notice here? Amos sitting on the whale's back. He seems to be leaning down talking to the whale. The whale seems content. Boris seems like he doesn't mind it. So this is just, again, adding to and helping us understand the friendship, the unlikely friendship that these two animals share. And last one, this was where um, Boris was delivering Amos back to his shore. So again, how does the illustration on this page help us to express the meaning of the text? So again, we can use the illustration and the words here. They go on to tell each other goodbye, that they would be friends forever, and it just adds to um, our understanding of this unlikely friendship. All right, y'all, so in this lesson, we learned that Amos and Boris show admiration towards each other. You also varied some vocabulary words and you explained and we talked about how illustrations contribute to the meaning of a text. So that's it for today. See you later.